The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. This massive box is the HP 16500 Logic Analyzer. It is just like the one I used when I got out of school. Back then, I was using them to analyze buses inside of a PC. But the thing is, beasts like this aren't really made or even used anymore. And that's because logic analyzers now look like this small box. Now they're used to look at things like GPIO pens or decode buses like SPI or I2C. Hello, my name is James. Welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. On this show, we talk about the equipment found on your electronics workbench. In this episode, we're going to talk about logic analyzers. Uh, this one, not that one. Here is a typical logic analyzer for low to mid-speed applications. These flying leads have female connectors to connect to signals on a device under test. This logic analyzer supports up to 16 input channels with leads grouped in sections of 8. How convenient! This device under test is a binary counter which toggles output pins and lights up LEDs as it counts. It has built-in test points that the flying leads can plug directly into. Like all test tools, you must connect the ground. You might think half of these LEDs are on solid. We can use a logic analyzer to see if that is the case. But first, let's go see how a logic analyzer samples data. Analog waveforms are made up of continuously changing values, while digital waveforms have defined values based on a range of voltages. In general, voltage above a certain threshold is a high and below it is a low. There is usually a small band where the state is undefined. The voltages for these levels depend on the transistor technology being used. The analyzer samples the data at regular intervals and then reconstructs what the digital waveform looks like. They only display one bit of resolution. In other words, they only graph a 0 or a 1 across time. Later, we look at a serial bus example with an Arduino. For now, let's go take a look at this logic analyzer software. Logic analyzers almost always use a PC-based software application, which means their user interface will vary. So consider this software a typical example with the basic controls you need to make a measurement. Up at the top are the sampling settings. There is a dropdown for memory depth, sample rate, and logic level. The memory depth for this analyzer ranges from 20 kilosamples up to 50 megasamples. The ones with stars are a special mode for this analyzer, so let's skip those. Next is the sample rate. This is how often the analyzer will grab a sample of the digital channels. This analyzer sample rate ranges from 200 MHz all the way down to 20 kHz. Last is the logic threshold setting, which this analyzer has presets for various transistor technologies as well as lets you define your own. Remember, this dropdown only sets the voltage level that determines a 1 or 0. Also, some low-end logic analyzers do not have this control because they are fixed at some voltage that's usually suitable for 3 or 5 volt logic. The channels on the left determine which get sampled when the analyzer runs. These four buttons allow setting a simple trigger. This analyzer lets us trigger on a rising edge, high level, falling edge, or a low level. You can also combine triggers across multiple channels with a logic AND. For example, if channel 0 was a clock, then we could combine its rising edge with a high level on another channel. Over on the right are measurements typical for a logic analyzer like pulse width, period, and frequency. There are markers we can use to manually make measurements, and then there are protocol decoders, but we'll talk more about those later. Okay, let's go capture some data. First, I'm going to uncheck all of the trigger conditions so that we trigger on any activity. Next, let's set the sample depth to something small like one mega sample and we'll pick 10 megahertz for the sample rate. Okay, I'll hit run and let's see what happens. Cool, now we have waveforms. All of these signals are toggling between one and zero, which means all of the LEDs are blinking. It just turns out that some are blinking so fast we cannot see them. Remember that I said this device under test is a counter? Well, these waveforms are a typical counter pattern. 
Backing up, you might be wondering, how did I pick the sample rate and memory depth from before? Well, I guessed. But now that there's data, we can see if we need to make adjustments. This software makes automatic measurements based on where the mouse is hovering. Notice the frequency on channel 0 is about 480 Hz, but the frequency on channel 3 is around 65 Hz. So this device is counting pretty slow. We sampled almost 21,000 times faster than the fastest signal. So let's set the sample rate way down to like 100 kHz. That is still going to be 200 times oversampling. Watch what happens when I run the analyzer now. It takes like 10 seconds for it to capture data. And that is simply because of the sample rate times the memory depth, which equals about 10 seconds. For most cases, this is way too much data and just makes working with the analyzer slow. So let's drop the memory depth down to 20 kilosamples. To verify the sample rate is fast enough, we just need to check that channel 0 is still at 480 Hz and channel 3 is still about 65 Hz. Next, I want to show you manual measurements because not all Logic Analyzer software does automatic measurements, but they almost all have cursors or markers. In this software, I click the plus to get a marker pair and then I click A1 to control it. Let's find a falling edge on channel 5. Now I select A2 and place it on the next falling edge so that they measure a full cycle. The markers show us that the period of the cycle is 64.5 milliseconds. You can also do measurements from one channel to another. So let's add another marker set and then place B1 on a rising edge of channel 2 and then place B2 on the next rising edge of channel 3. This measurement is an example of a delay or setup and hold measurement. Backing up again, remember that I said that this device is a counter. So if you're not familiar with logic waveforms, you may not actually see the counting that is occurring. To make it more clear, we can use a generic protocol decoder. Most analyzers support a bus or parallel measurement, but it may be implemented different in yours. We need to add an analyzer. Here are all of the protocol types this particular software can decode. For now, let's select the generic parallel decoder. Next, we tell the decoder which channels to use. And in this case, D0 through D7 matches up directly with channels 0 through channel 7 on the inputs. Over in the decoded results box, we can see the counter states counting in hex. Selecting one of the decoded values zooms the waveforms. At this state, the counter is C9 in hex. In binary, that would be a high, low, low, high, low, low, high, high. Oh, I almost forgot, hex and binary are not the only ways to view data. The software can show ASCII values, which would decode it into decimal values. Or it can even do ASCII and hex at the same time. See, now we know C9 in hex is 201 in decimal. Okay, let's move over to a slightly different type of example. Next, we'll use the logic analyzer to solve an actual problem with an Arduino and an I squared C EEPROM. For this setup, we have an Arduino Uno connected to a 24LC256. That is a 32 kilobyte electronically erasable programmable read-only memory, or EEPROM. The connection is using a serial bus known as I2C. Unlike before, we do not have dedicated test points, so we need to use these mini grabbers to connect to clock, data, and ground. You always need to connect ground. All of the Arduino code is in setup, so it only runs when the UNO resets. It is supposed to print the contents of the external EEPROM, but when it runs, we only get a few characters. So let's set the logic analyzer to trigger when the I2C clock goes high. After hitting run, I reset the UNO, and then the logic analyzer triggers. Zooming in, we can see the serial traffic has been decoded. It starts with an access to I2C address 50 hex, and then it writes the address inside of the EEPROM we want to start reading from, which in this case is zero. Next, the Arduino tries to get data from the EEPROM, but the chip never responds, so what the heck? Since the logic analyzer only shows ones and zeros, we cannot see if there is a problem with the signal. But I know we're using the Arduino's internal pull-up resistors, which are considered weak because they're so large. Weak pull-ups mean we might need to clock our I2C device slower. So in the code, I change the clock speed to 100 kilohertz. Aha, now the serial monitor shows the EEPROM's contents. Bald Engineer was here. 
Let's arm the analyzer and reset the UNO to see the I2C traffic now. Zooming out, you can see there is a lot more traffic this time. After addressing the EEPROM, we can see each byte of the message getting sent. B, A, L, D, and so on. Here is a case where the decode table helps quite a bit to read what is happening. Some logic analyzers let you trigger on specific addresses or traffic types when measuring serial buses. The analyzer we're using only supports simple triggers, which is fine if you only have one I2C device. If you have multiple devices, one trick is to use a debug signal to trigger the analyzer. For example, an extra channel on the logic analyzer is connected to digital pin 8 on the UNO. In the code, whenever the device is accessed, the signal goes high. Adding this signal to the logic analyzer lets us trigger on its rising edge. Now it is easy to capture that entire sequence from this device. By the way, using markers, it takes about 2.5 milliseconds to transmit my message. Logic analyzers help visualize multiple digital signals. They only offer one bit of resolution, but they are quick and easy to set up. With serial protocol decoders, it is easy to read what data is going across a bus, at least in most cases. We looked at how to make basic logic analyzer measurements and how to fix a I2C lockup problem. Remember that over on Element 14, you'll find show notes for this episode, which include links related to logic analyzers, including a couple of DIY analyzers that you can build. By the way, that is really the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see them. For now, it is time for me to get back to logically analyzing data on my electronics workbench. <laughs>